What's up guys, welcome back, hope you're doing well. So, some of you may have noticed that I recently switched up my benchmarking methodology about several weeks ago by discontinuing the presentation of minimum frame rates in favor of 1% and 0.1% lows. But since then, I've seen a lot of confusion in the comments as to what exactly these metrics mean. So today I'm gonna explain what they are and why you should care about them. The first thing to realize here is that minimum frame rates are pure garbage, which I'll expand on later. And secondly, average frame rates alone don't tell the whole story because they're not all created equal. That's why an average of 80 FPS on one PC can sometimes look or feel worse than 60 FPS on another. Clearly, there's another metric at play here that's missing from this graph and so many others like it, and that metric is called frame times, which is a concept that was heavily pushed by Scott Wasson, formerly of Tech Report, as a means of measuring performance. And while I'm going to sum it up as best as I can today, I've linked his detailed article on the matter in the description for those of you interested. Now, frame times are simply the number of milliseconds between frames, which technically means that they can be represented as a frame rate. By basic arithmetic, a 16.66 millisecond frame time would equate to 60 FPS, with lower frame times indicating higher frame rates. Now, to see how this metric impacts performance, let's use our first hypothetical PC. Let's say the first frame it renders stays on screen for 10 milliseconds. Then frame two appears for another 10 milliseconds. So far, so good. But when frame three comes around, there's a technical hiccup of some sort, which causes it to stay on screen for 80 milliseconds. And suddenly, this drastic spike in frame times breaks the once fluid illusion of motion. It's kind of like a flipbook getting stuck for a moment on one of its pages. If this behavior is repeatable, the game can quickly become unplayable. And what's worse is that this can occur, but still output a favorable average frame rate, which makes average FPS a poor metric for measuring user experience when frame times aren't accounted for. Now taking a look at our second hypothetical PC that scored 60 FPS on average, you can see frame one appears for around 16 milliseconds, as does frame two. In fact, all the frames are pretty evenly spaced apart, which provides an overall smoother experience than PC number one, despite having higher frame times overall. So it's not necessarily just about having the lowest possible frame times, but having frame times that are consistent with minimal variance between one another. How should we attempt to measure this, you ask? Enter 1% and 0.1% lows, which getting to the meat of this video is just a short way of saying the slowest 1% and 0.1% of frames that occurred during a run. Since most built-in benchmarks these days lack any frame time monitoring capabilities, I use a combination of Fraps and Frafs, two free lightweight utilities which can handle these tasks. So after recording and analyzing a particular benchmark run, Fraps picks out the slowest 1% of frames based on their frame times, averages said frame times, and presents that value as a frame rate. Then it's rinse and repeat with 0.1% of the slowest frames. What you end up with are two values that illustrate a group of crappy frames, with 1% lows being the group that comes around more often that you're more likely to notice. Additionally, the larger the gap between these values and your average frame rate, the more likely your gameplay will suffer, which is why a video card that yields similar or even slightly worse averages may still be the better choice if it delivers an overall tighter frame output. Now I have to give credit where credit is due. This 1 and 0.1% presentation style was heavily popularized by Stephen Burke and the team at Gamers Nexus. They saw the value in Scott Wasson's testing methods, but realized the average user would find frame time charts a bit confusing, so they began converting the frame times back into FPS at their 1% and 0.1% values to make the data more relatable and easier to digest. Gamers Nexus does some great work, so I'll throw down a few links to their website and channel in the description. At this point, it should be pretty clear why measuring a sample size of slow frames is more sensible than looking at a single minimum frame rate. I mean, it pains me to think that I ever gave any attention to a single frame for so long. And yeah, it sucks. It's the worst of all the frames. And for that, it should be beaten and publicly ridiculed. But in no way does that tell you anything about your gaming experience because it's not a repeatable behavior. It's just one frame, nor is it reliable. I mean, you could run that same benchmark again and you might yield a drastically different frame rate the second time around, which is why this metric is an outlier that draws no real conclusions on overall performance. Okay, the minimum frame rate is like a random fat guy who just stumbled into a 10K marathon, all right? You wouldn't see him in a crowd of thousands of in-shape runners and think, what a sluggish bunch. No, he, he probably just got lost on his way to BlizzCon or something, all right? He's an outlier. So, 
everyone just stop giving a shit about minimum frame rates. But that's pretty much the gist of it, and uh, hopefully that clears some things up. I personally plan to keep 1% and 0.1% lows in my testing methodology, as long as they continue providing valuable insight into the hardware that I review, or until something better comes along to replace them. If you're still a little confused on anything, feel free to leave any questions you might have in the comments, and I'll do my very best to look through them and answer them when I get a chance. Before you guys go, don't forget to toss me a like on the video if you enjoyed it, and also feel free to check out Bitwit Ultra where you can watch videos like this one early without ads for a buck fifty a month. It's totally worth it. Maybe. Definitely not. As always, I'm cow with up. No. Wow, I'm still doing that. As always, I'm Kyle with Bidwit. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see y'all in the next video.